Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first, before I start, I just wanted to say uh, if you guys could give a round of applause to the speakers before me, because I'm the last one. <laughs> Probably one of the hardest acts to follow. Thank you very much, Faisal. Uh, I had to actually promise that I wouldn't be tweeting throughout this speech, so I'm going to leave my phones on the side. Okay, so we can start. My name is Saleh, I am a 23-year-old Emirati, uh, born and raised right here in Dubai. My uh, involvement with TEDx, they came up to me a few months ago and they asked me, you know, do you want to be part of this uh, event that we're hosting? And they approached me first as a performer. Yes, I do play the piano, uh, but when uh, Hamda, one of the organizers, soon found out that the only song I knew how to play was My Heart Will Go On from the movie Titanic, <laughs> and I wish I was kidding, um, uh, she quickly decided that being a speaker was better fit for me. So I'm here for you today. Um, the thing that I like about this one, I'm a huge fan of TEDx events, uh, TED in general. I've been so for a few years now. But the major thing that I liked about this one was the name youth in it. Because I feel, you know, this is, I think, where I fit most or where I can relate most. So, in order to give a message to the youth, I decided why not share a personal story of mine. And I've got a closet full of them. So, mine starts a little while back. And please excuse the unflattering pictures that you would see before you. I don't know how clear that is for you guys. I am the eldest of four boys. Uh, like I said, it's not the most flattering picture, but it's the only one I could find on my laptop where we're not trying to kill each other. Uh, and yeah, just to give you an idea about how long ago this photo was taken, I, although being the eldest, I am now the shortest. And I have two of my brothers in the audience and they will show it that, that I don't know where they are. I can see them actually, there they are. Um, so yeah, let's go during that time. High school. High school for me was an awkward time, I think for most people. It wasn't really the nicest experience that I ever had. You see, I went to a very well-known uh, high school here in the UAE. Um, it was, the reputation was amazing, you know, the academic body. Uh, they really prepare you for the next stage in your life. I mean, once you reach 12th grade, you're literally ready to tackle the world. You know, it's that, it was that good then. Uh, but behind the scenes, it wasn't necessarily as rosy. Um, you see, behind the scenes, we had cliques that are formed. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with cliques, but they're basically small groups that are created because of social factors. And what were the social factors that affected my school were things such as uh, your last name, or your origin, or the car you drove in that morning, or the mobile you were carrying, even how many mobiles you can change per week. You see, these small social factors were stuff that would separate us as students. Uh, we wouldn't associate with someone because maybe a mistake his father had made or a reputation or even the level that he, he or his family had stood in society. I know it sounds stupid saying it now, but it really was. I mean, it was magnified. You know how everything's magnified when you're younger? It was magnified with us. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, rephrasing. That was our school parking lot. No, I'm lying, this is not our school parking lot. It was taken off of Google, but it was most, it was, it did really look like that. I'm not gonna lie. So could you imagine the trauma that one kid experienced when he came up the next day and he, uh, in this? A uh, Dubai taxi, a city taxi. One of the main ways of, means of transportation around the entire world. But that kid, and again, true story, was not only made fun of during that day, but he was made fun of during the entire year. He was picked on. And it was, uh, and because of this and several other incidents, I think other high school alumni that are in the audience, and two of which are speakers today, uh, Faisal Jassim, um, <laughs> would, uh, would appreciate the fact that this others finally, we had reached the end of the road and we had to go on to the next stage in our lives, university. I, being the eldest, uh, was sent off to, uh, <laughs> literally shipped off, um, to the United Kingdom where I attended the University of Essex. 
Don't be fooled by the picture. That is how it looked like on a day in the year, while the rest it was probably covered in snow that I had to walk on and probably lost a few thumbs. Um, so, yeah, it was, kid joking aside, it was one of the best universities I had ever gone to or had ever heard. I mean, I came back, and even when I mentioned it here, people would be aware of it. Because the University of Essex, the reason why I chose it was because it was one of the most, or still is, one of the most multicultural, diverse uh, academic body there is in the United Kingdom, where I think around 75% of which of the student body are from over 120 nationalities across the world. So it was an experience, I have to say, and I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the term foundation year, but we had to attend something called foundation year, which it doesn't matter what you're studying, accounting and finance, uh, but you were all put together in one year to get ready and, you know, to get prepped for university life. Um, you had classes from public speaking to problem solving, mathematics, and these were stuff you had to be forced to. So my friends in that year were literally from all over the world. Please ignore the unflattering picture. Uh, were from all over the world. They were, I had friends from Tokyo, literally Tokyo to Hawaii, and I'm not kidding. Uh, and I'll never forget my first day uh, at, at my foundation year, where a friend from Nigeria asked me, um, who are you? Simple question. So I answered back, I was like, you know, Salih al break And she was like, al-what? And when I, I noticed is her tone was different. You know, she wasn't thinking, oh, al break you know, um, his father's grandmother's dog, step-niece's great aunt is related to me in some weird way. It was more of a pronunciation error. You know, she didn't know how to spell it, and once that was over, she asked me another question that kind of took me by surprise. She was like, what do you do? And I was like, what do you mean, what do I do? I never experienced this question before. And, uh, and not, you have to understand, not only was it a culture shock, when I went to a foreign country, you know, um, there were literally no Emiratis at the school, uh, besides a few PhD that were married, and let's just say, can't really meet on an intellectual level. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so I was literally alone. So it was a culture shock for me there. And this time it was a social shock because I didn't understand what she meant by what do you do. And the question that followed was even more baffling. She was like, where are you going? And I quickly realized, like, okay, so these people want to know who I am as an individual. And they wanted to know what my dreams were, what my aspirations were, what my ambition was. They weren't concerned about what company my father owned or the car that I drove in that morning, which was a bus for four years. Um, and that started a beautiful relationship that I held for four years. So you see how sad I was when I had to move on as life goes into graduation. Graduation was a time when most people are very anxious because you know it's the end of your four-year academic year and you, you, you know, no more exams no more having to uh, talk behind teachers' backs or come up with new ways of how to cheat in exams. Uh, it was very strict where I was, but it was, you know, that's, so people are mostly celebrating, you know, they want to finish, but for me, and don't let the smile fool you, for me, it was, I was very anxious. I was actually very scared because in my head, I was like, I have to go home. You know, as cliche as it's gonna sound, I found myself in the United Kingdom. I knew who I was, I knew what I liked, I knew who I wanted to be. Who was I to know that if I go back to the United Arab Emirates, that I wouldn't fall under the same social factors that I started off with in, uh, in, in school? That I wouldn't come back home and start seeing people as a last name more than what initiative they had um, or, what, or, or what company they were associated with? But I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with this tiny thing, probably don't even know this. It's called the economic crisis that happened a few years ago. And I remember, I will remember this day, at my graduation day, I got the call and it was from my father and it went something like this. He was like, you are the eldest son and you are coming home. And it was literally like that. It, 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 there was no question, that was it, you're coming home whether you like it or not. And I felt as an Emirati, it was my duty to come back to my country when the entire world was in need and I had to do as much as I could to give back. Thank you. So there I was, summer of 2009, unemployed. It was very hard to get a job back then, no matter who you are. Um, so I was a graduate, and so I did a lot of internships. Uh, one of the places I interned in was one of my father's franchises. Uh, and for an unemployed graduate, 
I had to look of cheap ways, and when I mean cheap, I mean dead cheap ways to market these products. So uh, I, stum I was you know, searching on Google how, ways how to market, you know, grassroots marketing, cheap ways to do it, and uh, I stumbled upon this thing, uh, Twitter. I never knew what that was, and so I went on YouTube, and I said you know, how to tweet, how to twit. <laughs> and there was this whole ad thing and hashtag thing, which until this day I'm not very familiar with, but, uh, but I, I had adopted it, and it worked. It really got, you know, I, I learned how to do it, and it got the product out. But what I didn't know was the fact that I was going to connect with people, connect with my community again uh, by such a simple social media tool. You see, the beautiful thing about Twitter was the whole anonymity thing. You know, everyone was anonymous. No one had, la well, in 2009, no one had last names. No one, heck, even no one had first names. You know, there were names like Sahar al Lail and like Muhyun al Maha, and you know, these like, and even I had my own. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but before Fearless in Dubai came along, I was going under the company's slogan, and I was actually once known for almost 10 months as Do Fruit underscore UAE. <laughs> and I say that with pride, okay? Um, but that, that was it, and yeah, good riddance. Um, but if you check your timelines, it's still there, by the way. Um, anyway, so I, what did I soon realize? I soon realized that after such a simple social media tool was reconnecting me with an entire generation, with you guys, uh, I realized that we had talented people, crazy talented, unlike I've ever seen, you know, they always say the generation before us, you know, the, were the industrial ones. But the ones now, you know, illustration, di directing, graphic design, anything you can imagine, sports, Mariam, wherever she is. Um, I was connecting with people more on what they dream to be or what they achieve to be, instead of associating them, like I said, with these social factors that I mentioned. So I decided, okay, what now? What can I do? You know, why am I, ben why am I the only one benefiting from this when my brothers could benefit from this? When actually, why not just think bigger? Why not the world benefit from this? So it took me a few months, and with the support of my family and friends, I launched something four months ago uh, called ThinkUp. <laughs> so ThinkUp, in summary, because I don't want you guys to sleep, uh, is a virtual hub where like-minded nationals, I assumed it was just gonna be Dubai, but I was like, why not go crazy and do the entire region? Uh, where like-minded nationals from the entire GCC would come back, connect, and all they would do was express their talents and express their passion on a site that they could call home. You know, they could become and they wouldn't be afraid to uh, write an article based on a topic that they touch about where if they go to probably other companies, they would probably have they said no. And I'm proud to say just a little thing at the end. And uh, the initiative has managed to get uh, three students full time jobs at newspapers, local newspapers here in Dubai. We also have a 17-year-old in Saudi Arabia that is now a paid comic book artist from Florida, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and also we have, uh, we're currently working on our very first, uh, very first movie for the film festival with our members aging from 13 to 21. <laughs> Last slide, I promise. So what was the message I was trying to give you guys today, besides my crazy personal journey? Um, what I wanted to tell you guys was, I came back with n literally no hope for my generation because the traumatizing experience that I experienced during high school, and I think my other alumni would experience, uh, it wasn't very welcoming. But when I came back, it was different. My eyes were opened. A generation before me was forming with initiatives that grow literally every day. I literally see a, a new initiative on my Twitter timeline every single day. And it's, it's thrilling, it's nice, it's welcoming. It's nice to see that people are sharing ideas. I told you guys I was the eldest of four boys, and two of which are still in high school. And I keep on telling them on a daily basis that they should 
educate their friends and and educate their their f other family members and that it's our responsibility you know myself and you guys to go back and to educate the youth to move on from these social factors to not look at someone as a family name to move beyond the family name to be move beyond the reputations that were before them to start looking at people and start connecting with people based on their passion and their talent and their achievements which i think TEDx Youth Jumeirah was the greatest thing of all to happen to, you know, a great example because these guys have achieved and are inspiring. So I just want you guys to just think about it, discuss it with your friends, discuss it with your family members at work, at university, at school, or even you might, be, you might not even be aware of this thing. But these things still happen and bullying still takes place in schools. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bully at a time, but you know what, you learn and you grow. But it's time the, time, the time to change is now. And I think it's our generation that will make this movement happen. And like the theme goes, if not us, who? Thank you very much. <laughs>